Mr. Spears? Please. <laughs> All right, Ms. Baker, Mr. Cox, Mr. Dominic, Mr. Epperson, Mr. Eskaday, Mr. Jenkins, Mr. Lynn, Ms. Lynch, Ms. McCulloch, Mr. Pearson, Mr. Smith, Mr. Thibodeau. I have a floor, Madam Chairman. Let us please thank for the invitation by Commissioner Jenkins and pledge of allegiance by Commissioner Cox. Father God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your blessings. We recognize that this is a day that was not promised to us. So we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we thank you for this nation that we live in. We pray for the leader of our country, for the governor of this great state. We pray for all of our state and local elected officials. Father God, we are reminded in your word that there are no governments or authorities except that which you have established and is to be respected. Help us to conduct our affairs in a manner that shows respect and earns respect. It's best this back in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please turn your face away. Place your hand over your heart and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. of agenda additions, Mr. Jenkins? Uh, I'd like to make a motion to expand the agenda uh, to include a proclamation on behalf of Christian services to proclaim the month of November, Palms for the Poor Month in Cattle Parish. Second. Yeah. <laughs> I'd also like to make a motion to expand the agenda for a resolution uh, for the national celebration of after school programs, uh, keeping the lights on after school. Second. Any discussion? Any votes? That passes. Any other agenda additions? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Cox. I'd like to do a special resolution in uh, memory of Mr. Brian Yop, who is a business owner in Shreveport with the Shreveport Moving Storage, Beacons Van Lines, and Mayflower Van Lines, and who was also a police juror for DeSoto Parish. Uh, he passed away this past week and was laid to rest over the weekend. Second. Second. Any discussion? Any votes? Any passes? Any other agenda Reports, Mr. Fees? The administration reports. The only thing. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, Commissioners. We had uh, Commissioner Pearson requested the last time you met they have the Tourist Bureau come over to talk to you all. So today we have two guests. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, Stacy Brown, uh, as you know, the CEO for the uh, Tourist Bureau. And we also have Ms. Betty Matthews, who is a board appoint appointee for the uh, Commission on the Tourist Bureau. Come forward, please. Ms. Betty? Good afternoon. I appreciate you allowing uh, Betty and I to come before you this afternoon. Uh, these are really exciting yet challenging times here in Shreveport Bozier. Uh, as far as the tourism area goes, uh, it is good news that we are selling more hotel rooms than ever before. The challenging part is we're adding more new hotel rooms faster than ever before. Uh, year to date, our occupancy has been consistently the highest in the state of Louisiana. Year to date, we're currently 68.2% in occupancy. The month of August uh, was a little bit lower than our usual August. We dropped 2.2% in occupancy for the month, and we were at 68.8%. To compare that to other areas of the state, for the month of August, New Orleans was at 47.5, Baton Rouge at 55.6, Lafayette at 43.8. 
So we have been very much above the average, not only throughout the state of Louisiana, but also nationally. Our rooms sold, our rooms available, I'm sorry, is up 6.3%. That means the number of rooms that are available in our market has grown this year by 6.3%. The rooms we have sold this year have increased by 4.9%. So we are very quickly narrowing that gap between new rooms available and additional rooms sold. We work very hard to fill that gap. Uh, we do that in a variety of ways through tradition, traditional marketing, such as billboards, newspaper, magazines, radio, television. Also through a lot of new online mediums, such as an e-newsletter that we send out to more than 50,000 subscribers. Public relations also plays a big part in growing that business. And year to date, we have worked with journalists to garner more than $17 million in public relations value this year alone. Other mediums are more for, more face to face, such as sales calls, uh, sales missions, trade shows, consumer shows, and we also work cooperatively with a number of other organizations, such as Louisiana North, the Scenic Byways, the Film Office, the Holiday Trail of Life, and more. We also work with businesses such as attractions, hotels, and restaurants. And we work on that with them on cooperative opportunities such as billboards. Uh, Lamar Advertising has been very generous with us. Uh, they have matched a number of boards that we've been able to place throughout the community to specifically drive business to those attractions and events. We also do cooperative advertising in magazines and newspapers for our attractions as well as brochures and offer online opportunities as well. In addition to this, we also offer cash marketing funds grants that they can apply for. Uh, some of you may have read the Times article that appeared a few weeks ago, and you noticed a big increase in 2005. Hurricane Katrina changed our market, not only in the way that we market ourselves, but also in the types of businesses and things that we can go after. Uh, one example of a business that grew significantly after the shift from South Louisiana is the film business. Prior to Katrina, we had a, a small but steady business of lower budget films, commercials, some parts of larger films. Uh, but after Katrina, literally overnight, we had five productions in town waiting to talk to us about, can you accommodate my production? Uh, we've been successful in continuing to stay strong in this market by working with Arlena Acri in the Shreveport uh, Film Office, as well as Pam Glorioso in Bossier City. Uh, together, we manage the film office, uh, which is supported by a number of organizations, including the Caddo Commission. These funds are used to place advertising, pay for sales missions, uh, location scouting, and sales calls and trade shows. This area could not continue to be successful in the film market without this cooperative partnership, and your participation is very valuable, and we appreciate that. During 2006, uh, we had a challenge of a number of employees sharing offices, literally being in hallways, and we also had a need to better communicate to our visitors what there was to see and do in, in Caddo and Bossier Parishes. That prompted a decision by our board to add on to our current location. Instead of relocating, location, location, location is important, and we have an excellent location. Right on the entrance to downtown, easy access from Interstate 20, we are also surrounded by a number of our visitor attractions within a one to two mile radius. The expansion has been very cost effective uh, and would be much more cost effective than building a new building. So the addition looks large, it's about 6,000 square feet, with the main purpose of driving more people into the community through interpretive displays, information kiosks, and exhibits that entice the visitors to learn more and stay longer and spend more money. Tourism is truly an economic engine for Caddo and Bossier Parishes, and it's very important that we keep it healthy. In order to do this, we need a well-trained, consistent staff to grow the business. The Bureau has been able to maintain an experienced, productive staff by monitoring our salaries according to the Destination Marketing Association International. We are able to compare ourselves to bureaus of other like size across the country. Uh, there was a comment in the news article, uh, the Times article, that stated our staff received a 20% increase in pay. I want to assure you that this is not so. Uh, the average increase was 6.34%. We did add two new positions for this year, one of which we have filled, uh, and that was a regional sales position to specifically drive more business to the convention center. 
and uh, work on citywide business. That's a uh, business that's 450 rooms peak plus per night, so it will go to multiple hotel properties. We work very hard to be accountable and transparent, and this past summer, Randall Travel Marketing completed a new uh, updated tourism study that was presented at our annual Travel Outlook Conference. Uh, one, of the state, uh, one of the quotes that Judy made during that uh, convention that was quoted in the Times was, it sure is good to be Shreveport Bossier. Uh, looking across the country, well, we are one of the very few destinations that has actually seen an increase in hotel revenue, uh, so we are very blessed. Our repeat visitation is up nearly 10% to 85% repeat visitation. That's very significant. Our occupancy continues to outpace the national average. And what's even more important, the people visiting us rate us very highly in our destination and want to come back. Um, I wanted to help give you more information about the area and what's happening. Be glad to answer any questions. And I know um, Ms. Betty was wanting to give you a little update as well. But before I start on North Kettle, uh, I want to pass this out to each one of them. Uh, what Betty is passing out, we just started the Louisiana Film Trail, uh, or the Shreveport Bezier Film Trail that goes to Caddo and Bezier Parishes. <coughs> it has started kind of in the core and will grow out more into the parishes as we go. And I too appreciate the fact that uh, I was invited to come today. Um, I'm always available to come when you need me to come. Um, glad to do this. And um, as he's passing out, you will see in just a minute uh, the, the film trail that she was just referring to. You also see Miss Brandy is here as well. You want to come up, Miss Brandy? We just won't have everybody from the tourist board up. Oh, well, I can, I can be very brief, and while she's walking up here, I just want to report a little bit about what's going on in the northern part of the parish up in our way. Uh, we're so excited of the scenic byway, which has been dubbed the Boom and Bust Byway. That's Highway 2 from the Texas state line, four parishes over, and uh, we're very fortunate in Vivian to be able to receive the first of four kiosks that will be installed in the very near future. It's been 10 years coming on this grant, but anyway, it's finally a reality. Right now, I have a pond out in front of the museum, but we're working on it steadily. And uh, so our informational kiosk will not just include Vivian. It's going to, um, the panels that are going to be installed in it will pre represent the all nine towns. Every town will have some type of representation on the kiosk in our area up in Vivian. And uh, the others will be aptly uh, done the same way for their areas. And uh, I'm happy to report. Uh, I come up the elevator one time today with Larry Raymond. And, uh, of course, everybody knows Kettle Lake is flooded right now. And they're having a little bit of a problem there. But I understand that um, our representative, District 1, will be... Um, meeting with the group tomorrow at Ward 2 Industrial Oil City and uh, Mr. Raymond and himself about some things that they can do at the Earl Williamson Park up there. And so, um, you know, we're staying very busy up in the northern part of the state and uh, appreciate again the opportunity to get to come and just say hello to everyone. Let you know who I am. Thank you. We have Brandi, Brandi Evans as our Vice President of Communications, and she has been over today at the American Rose Center. Uh, we have, would like to invite you all. You should have received an invitation for the Holiday Trail of Light. Uh, we are officially kicking off uh, the holidays uh, with inviting the media and others out to our uh, Holiday Trail of Light. It's one of the cooperative things that we do. Uh, it's Shreveport, Bossier, and Natchitoches, Louisiana. Jefferson, Marshall, and Kilgore, Texas. And uh, we are really the managing partner for that and do the majority of the work. So Brandy's been out decorating today and getting ready for that. Uh, did you want to say something? <laughs> um, thank you all for having us uh, here on today. Uh, I think the uh, it, it takes all of you guys and all of us working together uh, to have such a wonderful tourism industry here in Shreveport, Bossier. Um, of course, we travel outside of the community to bring people into the community at the Convention and Tourist Bureau. And going to other destinations, I can tell you that we are very fortunate, very blessed here in our area, um, that we're not seeing some of the declines that some of the other Convention and Visitor Bureaus are experiencing, even those here in our state. 
um, you know, some of our partners are really having a tough time and um, where they're looking at budget uh, cuts, you know, we're looking at how can we continue to improve tourism in Shreveport Bossier. So thank you guys for having us here on today. I, I have a question. I mean, of course, I know they never print anything inaccurate in the Times. <laughs> but um, let me ask about, you know, we passed the film tax credit for Caddo Parish. Are you yes. all working with us to try and promote that? Yes, we are. How does that fit with what you all do? Um, we work, we meet together with Arlena Acri and Pam Glorieso uh, to design our advertising. And that is one of the things that is promotion, promoted in the advertising and public relations that we do for the film office. Um, that has been in several publications, um, such as P3 Update and some um, some other okay, then industry you publications. Okay, the city passed one, and the parish also passed a separate one. So are both of them then there, or, or, or how is that working? I don't remember exactly how it was okay. stated, but what we drive them to is the website, okay. Okay. And, and all of the information okay. is on the website. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yes. Commissioner uh, Dominique. Um, i got two questions. Um, the kiosks, when it, do we have an idea when they're going to be installed, I guess? They, they've run into a little snag with the weather. Um, they actually started digging out to, to pour the foundation. Uh, once they get started, they should complete it in two to three months, once it gets dry enough for them to actually pour that foundation. That for all of them, I know there's going to be some in Homer and Haynesville or some other areas. Yes, um, there's one in Vivian, right. one in Sarepta, uh one just outside of Homer, and... Uh, one in plain dealing. Okay. I knew I was in one. <laughs> and what date is our Christmas on Caddo this year? Do you know that? Christmas on Caddo is always the first weekend in December. <coughs> Y'all know. I'm just trying to get some information. How many? What, what is the? Uh, how many people attended that last year? Do you have any idea? I don't know that I heard a definite count. Um, if, if you, I know you've been there because I've seen you there. there. Um, and it, it is a tremendous <laughs> event. They day. put, they pack in as many as they can. They're actually looking at having some shuttle buses to bring additional people in. Uh, they do a fantastic fireworks show. Put on great music. Um, there's good vendors as well. Some opportunities for shopping that weekend. Um, so they do a terrific job out there, and, and we really appreciate. Uh, Larry Raymond and, and all the staff out there, they do a terrific job of making that event happen. And it, That's right. And Brandy just reminded me, it is the only fireworks festival this year um, because uh, the one on the Red River is not happening this year. Really? Rockets over the Red. So the uh, Christmas on Cata will be the fireworks festival to go to this year. And Mary Dunn is one of the primary ones that works on that as well. Right. Commissioner Pearson? Yes, I, I, I think I made the request. Uh, we have several. Well, the first, first um, in February 25th, 26th, and 27th, State Police Bureau Association will be meeting in, in uh, Lake Charles. And on, uh, I've been requested to ask that someone from our Convention and Tourist Bureau uh, would at least set up a table, uh, set up a booth, because in 2011 that convention would be in Shreveport. Absolutely. And so if uh, Jane, uh, what's Jane's name? Oh, Lambert. Jane Lambert. Okay. The Lee Jury Association is the contact person. 225. Three. Three four three twenty eight thirty five. But tell them why we're going to have it up here, Carl. Go ahead. I'll be president. I have it. Awesome. That's awesome. I, I believe um, Lisa Hayes has been talking with Mr. Lambert, but I will make sure. Miss. Miss. And we definitely want to highlight your presidency. <laughs> well, that will be going out. I'll, I'll come in and make charge. Um, Wonderful. It, uh, I, we have several appointees to boards, and, and I think one of the things that we have uh, been concerned, uh, not necessarily concerned, we want to hear from, you know, basically our appointees. And not that, I mean, we hear from, from, from Stacy and all the time about what's going on in the Bureau. We wanted to hear a, a lot of times from those persons who we appoint, you know, to, to represent us on the on the uh, on the board, and, you know, and, and it's not that we don't want to hear anything else that's going on, but we want to 
we want a, a, a lot of times hear from our appointees as to because we want to make sure that people we appoint <coughs> are involved and and uh, and have a, a real vested interest in what we're doing and I see that that she does and, and we're real pleased with that uh, one of the questions that I, I had is how many how many conventions did did we get in town that uh, con the bureau bring to town last year yeah I would have to wait that I, I didn't think of right before I came but I can definitely get you that exact number um, we had I want to say it was around 200 conventions and meetings in town last year but I, I hate to say that because I know I'll probably be wrong but I can get you that exact number and and I appreciate you wanting to have your appointee uh, talk with you and, and make sure that they are you know keeping up with your concerns and addressing any concerns that you may have that's that's a very good thing um, miss Betty is very active on the Commission on the board uh, she's on other committees she works very actively on the scenic byway committee as well uh, so she is very active but you know not everyone is and so it's very good that you want to make sure that, that your appointee is and that you see them and talk to them and, and keep up with what's going on well thank you so much for what what you've been doing and <clears throat> and, and especially what's going on in the northern part of the country the other um, side. you're most welcome and um, you know I'm still just a rookie at this so um, anytime you would like me to come and report all you have to do is contact me I'll be happy to be here um, you know or if you request I'll be here every time <laughs> but I mean you know it's just I didn't know and so please feel free to just pick up the phone and call and say we need you here we want to talk to you we want to see what you look like see if your hair has gotten any grayer <laughs> <laughs> thank you okay. just don't shave all yours off like he did <laughs> Make <Bye. it> smooth. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Casey thank you very much oh, I'm sorry. Let me oh, get the machine's advice. not everybody, working yeah, yeah. The machine's not working so just let get John's attention I just My have a few questions to ask her. Answer them if you want to, and if you don't want to answer them, don't answer them. But then, um, okay. So the Times got it wrong. You had a six and a half percent pay increase. Is six point three. Uh, six point three. Mm -hmm. yeah. Average. So you either you got a cost of living and some merit. Is that how you do it? Yes. Um, what we do is we actually get very detailed. We look at each individual position. Um, the Destination Marketing Association International publishes a salary survey every two years and they go into the size of the tourist bureau where we can look and say other bureaus are same size for this particular position these are their salary ranges then we can look at that position did they have any um, increase in duties how was their performance so it, it's actually very involved okay um, so 6.3 percent average so yeah. some people got some people could have got 20 percent then no there were no 20 well, what was the highest I, would, I could look and find out exactly what the highest was but I well you're doing salary well. adjustments as you said was part of it since you go along with what everybody else kind of does cost the national average which I don't know I don't care what they're doing in San Diego or California anywhere else to tell you the truth it doesn't have anything to do with what's going on here this was for what year 2008 yeah well okay. actually no for 2009 this, this is this I, year yeah. 2009 yeah. okay for and what were they in 2008 do you remember I believe it wasn't quite that much but I could look and see okay 2009 you were when's your budget year begin it's uh, we're on the calendar year calendar year 2009 so you did this latter part of 2008 mm-hmm okay yes we were not going through the same rigors that everybody else was with the stock market crashing and GM and everything else 6.3 that seems kind of high in that year um, okay we've got that how many employees do you have total we have about 25 that includes full and part-time how many part-time do you have it's about five or six part-time six we've got about 20 full-time for this area and that's an increase over what year before it's actually Not we're adding one but we've lost a person so it's the same number we had last year that's a lot of people and they all work they, they work every day they've got something to do every day Candace can't start to finish absolutely uh, in fact compared to other bureaus our size we have a smaller staff than most uh, well we're actually getting it done then aren't we 
See, our board voted registrar does an excellent job here. He works with half the staff that East Baton Rouge does. We have the same population. He gets it done. He saves us tons of money. So that's my hat's off to you on that. That's good that we can do more for less. The new building that we're building, how are you paying for that? We have done a bond for the majority of that. Okay. And that's going to be paid out over what period? 15 years. 15 years. How many board members do you have? We have 17 board members. 17. What do you, would you estimate their average length of service is? It's a three-year term. Okay. What's their average length of service? A lot of them have been on there for several terms. Do you have average any idea? Average is, is uh, nine years. Nine two, years. three-year terms. I mean, not nine. Six years. Two, three-year terms. Okay. Good. Thanks. Any other commissioners? Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate it. We have a, a brief uh, update uh, from Zillian Priest on the census partnership update. Our school board. Good afternoon. <laughs> You don't Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, President Lynch and members of the Parish Commission and Administrator Wilson for giving me a few minutes on the agenda to come out and talk with you about a very important event, and that is the 2010 Census. And uh, right now what we are going through for Northwest Louisiana, we have nine parishes in Northwest Louisiana that's included uh, out of the Shreveport office. I don't have to stand here and talk to you as a, a body about the importance of making sure that we receive an accurate count for a cattle parish and for Northwest Louisiana because we all know about the implications as it relates to federal dollars or dollars that's coming into the community as it relates to what they're projecting for the state of Louisiana, you know, with the Hurricane Katrina and the loss of the population there, as well as redistricting and all of that. But it's going to be very important that with this census that we develop a strategic plan to ensure that everyone is counted or as many people are counted as possible. Because we do have a high concentration of what you call HTCs, which is hard to count. Uh, that, that group that uh, for some reason or another that just refused to fill out, you know, the census form. But the difference with this census is that it's going to be a short form for everyone. In the past, you had some individuals who would receive the long form as well, as, and then some would receive the short form. But this census is one where it's basically a 10-question questionnaire. It's um, name, age, gender, uh, relationships, ethnicity, whether or not you own or rent property and what have you. It takes basically 10 minutes to fill out that questionnaire. So that's one of the uh, main emphasis that's going to change with this census. I provided each of you with a packet of information that talks about the census, uh, what's going to occur, and some of them there's a milestone there that's giving you the basic rollout of when everything is supposed to happen as it relates to the census. I'm here today to talk basically about this body uh, getting very actively involved in the census because you represent a constituent, constituency base out there that you can help to influence and update and educate about the importance of being counted. I'm here to ask this body to one, appoint a complete count committee. In your packet, there's a, a letter that's from me that talks about some of the things that, as a member of the parish commission body, that you can do to help ensure that everyone is accounted. There's activities, there's events. We would like for the parish commission to form a complete count committee. And what I'm recommending or suggesting is that this body, each member of the parish commission, would appoint two persons from their district to serve on, a parish, uh, on the uh, parish's complete count committee. My responsibility, of course, would be to train those individuals on what they can do to ensure that the parish uh, is fully counted. The other thing is in your packet, I've provided you with a, a, a complete 
seat count committee guide. Uh, in some of those packets, it gives a little bit more specific details, but in everyone's packet, there is a brief summary of what a complete count committee actually does. One of the other important things about this census also is that there's going to be a lot of promotion uh, information provided about the census. Uh, people will receive more than uh, one notification. It will start actually uh, getting a questionnaire mailed out to them to their household address the first week of March. There's also going to be a postcard that's going to be sent to those households. Then there's going to be a replacement questionnaire. And also, by the, if they do not fill out that questionnaire, of course, there's a barcode there that the household did not submit it. Then starting May 1, that's when you start seeing enumerators going out knocking on the doors to those households. In the 2000 census, the state of Louisiana had a 60% mail-back response rate. For the United States, the mail-back response rate was 67%. In Caddo Parish, our response, mail-back response rate was 61%, and for Shreveport, it was 60%. What we would like to do is to increase that mail-back response rate for Caddo Parish to 70%. If we can increase that uh, mail-back response rate to 70%, that means every household that receives the questionnaire, if 70% of the people fill it out, mail it back in, then the enumerators can start going out May knocking on the doors of the remaining uh, groups to get those individuals to respond. There's another uh, important uh, part that you can play, and that's it's going to require a lot of people working for the census. Uh, when the Shreveport office opens, Shreveport will actually have an office that will open this fall. There are two offices in Louisiana right now, one in Lafayette, the other is in Baton Rouge. But the Shreveport office will open in the fall, I do not know the exact date, but out of that office it will service the nine parishes in northwest Louisiana. And there's going to be an opportunity for numerous jobs, recruiting assistance, clerical positions, and what have you. The pay range um, starts at $9 an hour, and it goes up right now to $14 an hour. Flexible hours, it's temporary work, but uh, with the pay, uh, pay scale there, individuals uh, would have the flexibility as well as those individuals who are working out in the field with mileage reimbursement. So I am asking for the Parish Commission, of course, to support the census uh, with uh, the formation of a complete count committee and to uh, definitely support the census and market and help us promote it within each and every one of your communities. And in your packet, there's information where if there are individuals who are interested in applying, they can apply uh, online. The website is on the inside of your packet, as well as the 800 number for individuals to, uh, uh, you know, to call uh, to get scheduled for testing and also for training. Uh, we also have practice tests that's available for individuals who may have some issues as it relates to taking tests. Commissioner Thibodeau. Yeah, uh, can you tell me how are non-U.S. citizens, either legal or illegal, counted in the census? Everyone is counted in the census. The census does not ask whether a person is legal or illegal. If you are in the United States, when the census is taken, you are counted. So there's absolutely no distinction between no a legal distinction. citizen and an illegal citizen. No distinction. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Between the Census Bureau and ACORN. Okay. So they're not just going to rename their organization and still count in the census? Uh, not according to the Department of Commerce. Okay. Census Bureau. Okay, thank you. Okay. Commissioner Pearson? I'm sure you have an idea from the last census what groups or what areas were, were least responding 
to the mail in? Yes, we do. Is, is there any any specific thing that that you considering uh, to to make sure that well it leads to greater enhance the opportunity to get more mail ins Yes, I and is that something that we could do, especially in our districts, that could help you with that? That's what we call the heart to count. And uh, those census tracts, they have been identified where you, uh, where the heart to count, with, uh, where they've been pinpointed. And of course, there's going to be a special effort to ensure that those census tracts are really worked uh, with special programs, with marketing, uh, with uh, outreach, with uh, concentration on door to door, uh, and all of that. And that's where each and every one of you uh, can become definitely involved, especially in your districts and what have you. Because we can identify for each and every one of you where those census tracts are and even as it relates to where your district actually is. There's also going to be special operations as it relates to group quarters for uh, college students, uh, persons who live, uh, the homeless, and all of that. And if I can help with that, you know, uh, I'll turn the volunteers okay. to do that because every, everybody needs to be counted, I guess, even if they aren't citizens. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure they would be afraid to fill it out anyway. Mm -hmm. but anyway, if there's something that I can do to help, uh, I'll be happy to do that. Commissioner okay. Cox? Uh, as far as the other governing bodies like the city council, the school board, the town councils, and Vivian, Blanchard, are you getting this notice out to everybody or are you uh, just coming to us because we're the best? <laughs> <laughs> we want everyone involved in the census. The city of Shreveport, they've already... <laughs> 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 we want everyone. <laughs> we want everyone involved. <laughs> with the census. Uh, the city of Shreveport, they've already established a complete count committee. They are already uh, meeting. They've been trained. And they meet uh, every two months. Their next meeting is on November the 8th. So they have uh, appointed their complete count committee. Uh, we have been uh, up into the rural uh, areas of Caddo Parish all the way from Cattle, Bossier, Webster, Claiborne, uh, Sabine, and many of those towns and communities have complete count committees. There is a special effort as it relates to schools, which is the Census in the Schools program. And we're working with each school district in the nine parishes to ensure that schools are forming a partnership that they are working with the census as it relates to information and materials being given to students. So there's a huge operation. The census is also adopting schools uh, within the area to uh, increase, you know, the response rate. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Bruce. Thank you very much. She made the meeting first that you missed with all the mayors and clerks, so she is working out. And don't let me get on Vivian right now. <laughs> I appreciate the I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to come before you, and I always uh, like to leave you with this word: it's easy, it's safe, and it's important. And the 2010 census, it's in our hands. Thank you. All right. <laughs> yeah, commissioners, I'd just like to inform you all that uh, we have another free rabies clinic coming up this weekend at AB Palmer Park, and it's a very successful uh, program. Uh, also, uh, on the 15th of October, after our last commission meeting, I received a call from Mayor Glover inviting me to go with him to Washington, D.C. to speak to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Bloom, who is the Treasury Department Senior Advisor on Manufacturing, and also Mr. Tim Lee, who is the General Motors Global Manufacturing uh, CEO that discussed the plant here in Shreveport. So I'll be attending that meeting on Wednesday morning. There are two meetings that will be taking place, and uh, also uh, Secretary Morley and Mr. Kirk Foreman will be attending that meeting also to discuss the future of the plant here in Cattle Parish. Okay? So I just wanted to be aware of that. I didn't get an invitation to go to China, <laughs> and I found out about that in the paper that you all did. But at this meeting, I did get an invitation. I called Mary Landry's office 
uh, this week to confirm these times and date, and the meeting is on, and I'm going to go represent Carroll Parish Commission and uh, see what we can do as a commission body to help out. Commissioner Cox? Is there uh, anyone from the commission okay. either able to go or invited to go? Uh, certainly, anyone is invited to go with me. It's not a closed meeting by, by no means at all. Okay. Well, I, I just think it's uh, something to this magnitude. And, you know, I woke up the other morning, looked in the paper, and found out our, our mayor is going to China, which I understand now he was invited by the government of China, <coughs> along with mayors from the other, other parts of the country who have, in fact, General Motors or manufacturing plants there. But I still look at it this way. That's our plan. That's our responsibility. Now, I'm not saying Mr. Wilson himself cannot go and represent us. He's done it very well. I just think somebody from this body needs to go to that meeting to find out what's going on, bring it back here, and sit down with us. I'm not saying Mr. Wilson can't do it. I'm just saying somebody from this body needs to be there. Thank you. Commissioner Escudé. Um, I'm glad you're going. You see, normally I would be cautious, you know, when you get an invitation from the city to get <coughs> drug into their mess because um, that's generally dangerous. Um, so that's good because not that it's going to do any good. It's a begging mission uh, right now. And I guess just to meet our new little foreign friends who own our plant. But it's good that you go because you can remind the mayor in the city that they can offer absolutely nothing. Exactly. They have nothing to offer. Exactly. They don't own the property. They don't control the tax. But they have nothing. So they can go bloviate and beg and do everything that they want, all that they want. But if it gets down to it, to where you have to actually make some accommodations, the parish naturally and the state will be the ones to be in position. So uh, if for nothing else, uh, you know, keep them straight. Don't let them steal your thunder. And let them know you can't negotiate with no money in your pocket. Exactly. That's correct. All right. Thank you. Okay. okay. Hey, commissioners, uh, one, one last item. Well, we had a, uh, a appropriation of finance committee on, on uh, August the 17th to talk about a financial strategy going forward next year sometime. I placed at your station a package of a summary of that meeting as well as an action plan. And what I would like you all to be able to discuss with us when we meet on the 13th of November at our next retreat, budget retreat. So if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, hope we'll be able to discuss this uh, at that time. That concludes my report, ma'am. Um, Commissioner Dominique? Is a, Matthew you going to update us on anything with the animal control? Or is that it? Uh, I gave you the update for the sake of time. I just kind of okay. skipped the sure. part of that. Uh, let me just say that on the um, memo that you sent out on the on the debt service, yes, ma'am. I'll refer that to the Finance and Appropriation Committee. Package that you okay. uh, Any other commissioners? Just don't forget that the uh, our little thing here is not working, so I just need to see your hand if you have something. Thank you, Mr. Communicates and reports. Done on the agenda, ma'am. Okay, Commissioner Dominique. Um, I just wanted to. Um, this past Thursday, we mentioned that we had, did have the mayor's clerk meeting, and just wanted to thank um, Administrator Woody Wilson for coming out and having a nice fish with us and. I know Commissioner Cox and Lucky missed out, and uh, uh, Woody just did an excellent job of updating our area mayors and clerks concerning the uh, utility district, and you did a really, really good job of updating not only on that, those issues, but the other issues as far as our bond rating, et cetera. Um, and I just appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Next item. Uh, no old business on the agenda. New business is... Uh, ordinance 4925, Clerk Sergeant, adjudicated property to be surplus. Moved to Thursday. Saturday. Moved by Commissioner Pierce, second by Commissioner Epperson. Any discussion? Please vote. That passes. Next item. Uh, ordinance 4926 requires the uh, parish get a uh, prior look at any expenditures involved in the Shreveport's master plan. Move to Thursday. Second. 
Moved by Commissioner Lynn, second by Commissioner Thibodeau. Any discussion? Yes. Yes. Me. Okay, Commissioner Cox. I just need. Some, uh, are you just trying to get them to do a dime by dime analysis on this? Or, or three weeks ago, Thursday, the Master Planning Oversight Committee met in this room, and we asked Larissa Brown, who's the chief consultant with Goody Clancy, if she was going to provide itemized statements or to let us know how we would be being billed and she said that in the contract written by the MPC that it did not require them to do any itemized billing uh -huh. and then um, Councilman Bowman and myself then again asked her if she would do that and she said that it was not required in their original contract. At that point in time Rick Seaton with the mayor's office printed up something from his computer which I put in everybody's box that was a more detailed billing statement than I had ever seen in regard to the master plan, which was the one that totaled, I think, $374,000 that has been spent to date. It showed the $20,000 credit that Goody Clancy gave in regard to the computers not working at the um, at the event at the uh, convention center and I, if that's all they cost was twenty thousand dollars i say we might need to bring them back and then pay them that twenty thousand dollars for those things to work in another arena um, i feel that the the taxpayers have the right to know how the money is being spent if we're paying $20,000 for a website, then we need to know that we're paying $20,000 for a website. And if that's the fair price for a website, what all is included with it, or if um, the website is $40,000, or if the website is $10,000, or if the website is $800, just to know just exactly what the breakdown is. If it's a $20,000 website, I'm guessing there's some other maintenance and monitoring and, and information gathering. So basically, all, all you want is an uh, itemized bill. I want an itemized bill. I would like to see Caddo Parish have an itemized bill before they pay their portion of the master plan. I think the master plan is a great idea. I think it'll definitely move us forward. However, if we're spending taxpayer money, I feel that the taxpayers have the right to know how that money's being spent. Okay. That's all I need. Any other commissioners? Please vote. Oh, Yolanda. Training day. I didn't bring our uh, okay. sweet teeth and cane today, so she's. <laughs> okay, that passes. Commissioner Jenkins, the resolution. Oh, okay. I'd like to make a motion. Uh, to move to Thursday, a proclamation in support of Christian okay. Service Program to uh, proclaim the month of November as pause for the poor month in Cattle Parish. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Jenkins, second by Commissioner Thibodeau. Any discussion? Please vote. Passes. Commissioner Cox? Yes. What was the resolution? Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking to about something else. Wake up over there. <laughs> Don't let me He's come over there. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd uh, like to uh, have a special resolution in recognition of Brian Yacht for his uh, dedicated service as a business owner within the Cattle Parish, and along with his uh, his duties as uh, police juror for DeSoto Parish. Second. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Cox, second by Commissioner Dominique. Any discussion? Please vote. Yeah. That passes. I'm going to make a motion for a resolution for National Celebration of After School Program Month. Second. Second. By the chair, second by Commissioner Epperson. Any discussion? Please vote. Go <laughs> pass. Move to adjourn. Yeah, that's why. So we can do it again.